In this video, we'll talk about the concept of cell differentiation. This is a fundamental concept in developmental biology and in this video, we would learn the concepts of specification, determination and commitment. Cell differentiation is a process of generating specialized, specialized cell from a stem cell. So from this particular stem cell, it can ultimately become neuron, epithelial cell or fibroblast via the process of differentiation. During the process of differentiation, the proliferation or the division process of cell ceases and it acquires structural and distinct functional elements that can govern its property. Now, the biggest thing about differentiation is it cannot revert its identity once it is differentiated. That means after becoming a neuron, cell has to function like a neuron for the rest of its life. One fine day, you cannot find a neuron becoming muscle or neuron is reverting back to the stem cell. So this is the biggest property of a differentiated cell that it would maintain its functional identity for the rest of its life. But this differentiation process is not at all easy. There are different stages during this long process. So there are two big stages during differentiation. One stage is known as specification. It is a early stage of the commitment process. So in this stage, the decision is kind of changeable. That means it is liable to change. And there are external and internal influences that can modulate specification process. Differentiation is one of the uh, complicated process and the second stage of differ dif differentiation is known as determination. Determination is a process of commitment. It's a decision point which is irreversible. That means once the cell is determined to become a particular cell type, it has to become. There is no way out. In this video, we would talk about these steps in a bit more detail. So let's begin. So the first stage of the commitment process is known as specification. Remember, commitment happens before the differentiation. So differentiation is kind of like an outcome and commitment is the reason why th there would be a differentiated outcome. So the first step of the commitment is specification. A cell or tissue is said to be specified when it is capable of differentiating autonomously. When placed in an environment that is neutral with respect to a developmental pathway and it can differentiate autonomously, then it is known as a specification. So let me explain it with example. So here is a cell and this particular cell is specified to become a muscle. So eventually if we keep it in the dish, it should become a muscle. Another cell type is specified to become neuron. So obviously if we keep it in the dish in a neutral situation, there are intrinsic drive that would make it a neuron. So this is known as a specification step. But this particular step is liable to change. For example, if you give external influences such as you take this neuron cell and or this muscle cell and put it in a different environment. For example, if you put this muscle cell with a lot of neurons, there could be influence from these neighboring neurons and possibly this muscle cell can eventually become a neuron even if it is destined to become muscle at the first place. That means specification process is kind of reversible. It is capable of being altered. So moral of the story is during the process of specification, external influences matter a lot. Okay, the next stage of differentiation is known as determination. It is a more advanced stage of commitment and once a cell is determined to take a fate, it cannot reverse. So external influences, internal influences, nothing would matter. It has to differentiate. So determination is an advanced stage. And in this particular stage, the cell has to be uh, getting influences from external or internal sources, but it won't matter. For example, once this particular cell is determined to be neuron, if you keep it in proximity with neurons, it would still become a neuron. If you keep it in proximity with muscle or even if you keep it alone, in all of these cases, it would ultimately become neuron. That means once it is determined its fate, internal external cues would not matter that much. That's the punchline. 
So now let's talk about how differentiated cell is different from a normal cell. So a undifferentiated cell and a differentiated cells are quite different from various perspective. They could be different from morphological perspective. Obviously a stem cell looks very different from a neuron. There could be changes in chromatin landscape, gene expression profiles, protein related different, uh, differences such as like post translational modifications could be different. There could be epigenetic changes in simple words. There could be also different regulatory RNAs which drive the change in gene expression or chromatin landscape. So there are different different aspects which could make a differentiated cell very different from an undifferentiated or a stem cell. But the question is what is the origin of these differences? So what is the molecular mechanism of cell differentiation? It is very complicated, it is diverse and there could be several mechanisms involved cell involving cell differentiation. But we would look at some strategies to get a little bit idea. So let's talk about a strategy one. So here is a particular cell. It has two alternative fates. One is let's say uh, becoming an epithelial fate and the second is becoming a neuron. So there could be master regulators such as master transcription factor A which drives the fate towards epithelial cell. There could be also master regulator transcription factor B which drives the fate towards neuron. And both these master regulator factors are actually driven by internal and external influences. Now if you want to take a live example, let us bring a live example from the immune system. So the CD4 positive T helper cells can get differentiated into different different sublineages such as Th1 cell, Th17 cell, Th follicular cell, Th2 cells and all of these cell types has their different function, distinct molecular identities. So there are external influences such as specific cytokines. These cytokines influence the process of determination or differentiation. So these cytokines depend upon which type of cytokine cocktail is there determines what master transcription factor would be activated. For example, if interferon gamma and interleukin 12 is there, the master transcription factor T bet is generated, which ultimately give rise to Th1 subtype. Similarly, different cocktails produce different master regulator transcription factor. Each of these master regulators give rise to different gene expression modules which might lead to differentiation into different sublineages. So there are plethora of steps that can occur underlying differentiation and it is fairly complicated. Now let's talk about a strategy too. There are multiple strategies. We are only talking about few hand-picked strategies. Now let's say there is a master regulator one which give rise to which is uh, giving rise to a master transcription factor. There is a master regulator two which is giving rise to another transcription factor. And this is overall regulated by microRNA X. Now all these transcription factors control specific gene expression modules. Now these modules kind of suppress each other. That's why in a stem cell state none of the fate are chosen. Neither fate 1 or fate 2 is chosen because there is a mutual suppression. This is a hypothetical example. But anyway, imagine there is a developmentally regulated microRNA. So in one point of development, this particular microRNA is predominant and this microRNA binds to master regulator 2's mRNA transcript. So obviously it would inhibit the production of master regulator 2. As a result, what happens, the gene module that was controlled by master regulator 2 is now downregulated, so the suppression is removed. Now one particular gene module which was controlled by master regulator 1 would now dominate. As a result, one particular fate would be chosen. And this is how the fate determination happens. And these are very few examples that we have taken. There could be epigenetic modulations, there could be chromatin modulations, there could be multiple modulations in combinations as well. So it is far more complicated that we can imagine. But anyway, overall there could be epigenetic influences, mRNA mediated controls, things can be degraded fast or think, uh, mRNA can sustain for a very long time. There could be differential gene expression, there could be transcriptional control.
there could be protein degradational control that means imagine a particular protein to be present in the initial phase of the differentiation and eventually it degrades or let's say initially the protein is degraded but beyond a certain point of time in development the protein stops degrading and is stabilized that leads to the ch choice of one particular fate over the other and this is how cell differentiation take place so in this video we get an overall idea there could be also promoter related changes for example promoters of differentiated cells are very different from a stem cell so it shows different nucleosomal organization compared to a stem cell it also shows different histone marks present in the nucleosomes so for example in stem cell there is a balance between activatory and repressive marks now in a particular differentiated cell there could be selective activatory marks or selective inhibitory marks which are very different the pattern is very different from a stem cell or an undifferentiated cell and these combination of factors make one particular cell different from the other and that is how the fate is determined in subsequent videos we would talk about more uh, details about differentiation process their classifications autonomous non-autonomous fate specification etc but let me tell you in order to understand these kind of complicated process scientists require a combination of techniques a combination of proteomic transcriptomic metabolomic and multi-omic approach is required to understand complicated process like differentiation anyway you must be wondering why we would learn about differentiation differentiation is really important for example if you know how a cell differentiates you can generate different cell types from the stem cell for example you can produce neuron retinal neurons liver hepatocytes muscle cells etc now why that is useful imagine somebody is undergoing a third degree burn now obviously this particular person needs a graft but eventually there is a huge incidence of graft rejection right so if this particular person can donate donate its skin cells and that skin cell can be converted into stem cells by specific cocktails and we know how to make skin cells out of the stem cells then we can generate skin graft artificially and then this particular graft can be donated to the person with injury now since this particular cells are coming from this patient itself there would be no problem of graft rejection so the grafting would be more efficient compared to the traditional method of grafting so this is how we can understand why these kind of cell differentiation or understanding the uh, mechanism of cell differentiation is really important and this would be in future be very important for stem cell replacement therapy I hope this video was useful. You can get notes and flashcards in my Facebook page. Also, you can follow me on Instagram. All the links are in description. You can support this channel by clicking on the super thanks button, which is on the bottom right corner of any video. You can contribute using Paytm, PayPal, UPI, net banking, or any other payment methods. You can follow us on social media. All our social media links are provided in the description. See you in the next video.